Hey guys, how are you guys doing this afternoon? Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I never know how to start these things. I am just a little like completely flabbergasted. So since I have last seen you, uh, first of all, I've been really sick. So you have to feel pity for me. My husband says I'm hilarious because uh, I make everybody want to feel pity for me. It's been bad. I've had this horrible cold. And then on top of that, um, we changed. Hey, Diana, we changed uh, like our schedule. Like my kids could no longer all do gymnastics at the same time. And I'm just like, Bleh. So now the little one goes on Thursday afternoon. Like I have to have him there at 3.45. It's 2.45 at my house. So me, yes, Diana, I have been. And then um, on top of that, two out of three kids have not finished school today. This hardly ever happens. But today, they've not finished. So we're about to go drop the little one off and we're gonna come back and I'm gonna make the other two finish. So it's just been a heck of a day. Um, and then Dawn's power goes out. So Dawn's not going to be here today. That's really sad. And I've got like a million links for you guys. But never fear, Jessica's here. So everybody say hello to Jessica. Um, Rachel, you know what? I think it is. Rachel's saying it's been a crazy week around her house too. Um, well, I think it's the devil. <laughs> because Christmas was over last Thursday. And so I was like, oh, Monday, we're really going to hit it back to school. And I'm going to start my New Year's diet. Because everybody has to start a New Year's diet, right? And I'm gonna exercise, and I, we're just gonna be like back into it. Bambi, I'm sorry you're sick. Oh, you were supposed to have a rest week. Ah, and uh, yeah, no, none of that has happened this week. I haven't been able to do anything like I wanted to. And this one has just been, it's just been ugly. It's just like, I've felt horrible. Today is the first day I have really felt good. But enough about me, other than to tell you who I am, in case you're new and you're like, who is this crazy lady? So my name is Pam Barnhill, and I have three homeschooling podcasts and a homeschooling website. Um, we have um, the Homeschool Snapshots podcast, which is interviews with homeschool moms, just like you. Uh, all about the ups and downs of their homeschool. They're really fun. It's on hiatus right now, but we're coming back the last Tuesday of this month. I also have the Your Morning Basket podcast, which is all about finishing strong and homeschooling well, but enjoying it while you do it. And the way you do that is by adding morning time to your homeschool day. And that's what that podcast is all about. And then I have the Homeschool Solutions podcast, which is really an audio blog. It's like different homeschooling moms reading um, blog posts that they have written so you can listen to them while you're doing the dishes or walking the dog or spending a few minutes on the treadmill because your New Year's resolution is going better than mine. You can just listen to the blog post. Lots of helpful things there. We have one, oh, excuse me, I did not mean to bump that, from uh, Kara Anderson this week on Friday. So lots of good stuff. I'm um, so happy with all the new content on the website. If you guys haven't been to PamBarnhill.com, you know, for a long time we were really kind of just putting up podcasts um, and Jessica's state series, which she's finished now. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But um, we were really just putting up podcasts and now we have contributors coming on and uh, really putting up some great content on the blog. So if you haven't been over there lately, check that out. It's PamBarnhill.com. And uh, there's just some really good stuff up there. So that's, that's enough about me. Let's talk a little bit about a couple of other things that are going on. So one thing I wanted to be sure to announce and tell you guys about today, before I got too far into the geography stuff, is our newest Morning Time Methods webinar. I sent out an email about this late last night, and this is actually art in morning time. So the, the actual uh, practice of art as opposed to art appreciation. And um, what we're going to have is one of our morning time methods webinars. Now what makes these really cool, first of all, they're absolutely free. Just go sign up for it. You can watch live or you've got 48 hours to watch the replay. And what we have is a, an expert or a master teacher come on and you have your kids there with you. So this is not something where you shoo the kids away so mommy can watch your webinar. You actually have the kids there with you. And the master teacher, in this case, it's Lucia Hames. 
who is from chalkpastel.com. Her daughter is Trisha Hodges, who runs that site. And uh, Nana is what they call her. She is the master artist, and she is going to be doing two little chalk pastel tutorials with the kids. So, you will need to pick up some chalk pastels, but let me tell you guys, these are super inexpensive. You can get them from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. You can order them from Amazon if you have Prime. Uh, you're gonna need them by next Wednesday because this is next Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. So we're gonna have about 20 minutes of doing art, and then we're gonna have about 20 minutes of uh, answering your questions. So as you're watching your kids do the art and go through the practice of the art and everything, um, some questions may come up in your head. How am I gonna do this? And um, and once, you know, once that little art tutorial part is over, you get to ask your questions on the webinar and then they're gonna answer them for you live. I'm not gonna answer them, they're gonna answer them and then I will just be there to kind of moderate, which is what I do best. So connect you with the experts. So I'm really excited about it. So be sure to go sign up for that one. Okay, I think those are all the announcements I have. I have a lot of announcements today. So let's talk about geography in our morning time. Okay, I love geography. I'm kind of a geography geek. And actually it's really funny because I married a geography major. Um, so that's kind of weird too. But, um, and then Olivia, my oldest, loves geography as well. So geography is one of those things that we just find kind of fascinating. And I wanted to share a few resources for you for morning time. The first one I want to talk about is one that Dawn loves. And she was like, oh, we have to share this one. And um, this is, uh, oh gosh, I can't even remember the name of the DVD. Uh, uh, shoot, it's a CD or you can download it now, MP3. I own it. It's the it's the sing along, it's state like states and capitals and countries and capitals. Jessica, what are they called? I think it's just geography songs, is what they're called. Um, we have the one about the continents and the oceans, and then it breaks up the different countries of the world, like it breaks it up into different geogra um, geographical regions, and so it'll do like all of the Far Eastern countries together and all the European countries together, and you know, probably divides Africa in two and things like that. But you sing the names of the countries. Yes, it's the Kathy um, Trexel ones. Thank you so much, uh, Diana. So, um, we, we have those. We sing along with them, we love them. We like the, ca the continents and oceans one the best. And actually, we've ended up making our own geography songs uh, because all the ones in her list are not the ones we memorize in our co-op. We have like certain ones that we memorize in co-op and they're not all on there. They don't match up. So we've kind of made our own ones. But if you don't have a co-op that you're adhering to and you're just looking for some ready-made geography songs, these are good ones and your kids will learn those country names from singing those geography songs. And Diana Kennedy said it might be on Prime Music. I don't know, but it might be. That's a very good point, Diana. So if you've got like an Alexa or a tap, um, or if you've got Prime and you can open up your computer or your phone and you use the Prime Music app, check on there and see if those geography songs are on there because hey, then you don't have to buy them. You just got them. And oh, I wonder, okay, so I have been really tempted to try the Amazon Music Unlimited thing because we went, okay, totally off topic. We went to see Sing last week and of course we love the soundtrack of it. And okay, Jessica is saying it is on Prime. So if you have Prime, you don't even need to buy this. You can access these geography songs without doing that. So there you go. So it kind of renders my Amazon Music Story moot, but I have been really tempted by the Unlimited. Uh, so. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about uh, these little books. These are awesome. So um, the, she has Draw Asia. This is volume one. We're doing this one this year and Draw Asia volume two and there's Draw Europe and Draw the USA and I'm not sure which other, like I'm, I think South America's out and I'm not sure about Africa yet. Okay, so these are, um, 
just really great books. And of course, you know, I'm sorry, Facebook makes everything backwards. But basically, she walks you through how to draw the continent. And so she tells you to fold your paper into grids and make the fold, fold lines because these are gonna be your reference points for where you're drawing things. And then you come over here and she starts telling you things like, um, let's see. Before we draw Asia, we must draw some bodies of water. Keeping your paper vertical, begin by drawing the eastern edge of the Mediterranean Sea. Um, notice how its southern shore dips just below the dotted line and notice the gap. Be sure to uh, leave a gap in your outline. And so you just kind of follow the picture and the little written directions. It's backwards, Diana, because uh, Facebook doesn't switch it around like Periscope does. So um, following the visual cue that's on the page and the written directions, you can learn to draw maps. And so what we do is I'll present, um, I'm actually using this with my upper school co-op class, I'm teaching geography in there, and I'll present about 10 to 12 pages at a time where I'm leading them through the pages and how to draw it. Um, I'm doing it on like a big poster size paper, so mine is always wonky, I can never get the scale right. If you could do it on an overhead projector, that would be perfect. But um, I present about that many pages, and then we come home, and Olivia, I hand her the book, and I make her do two practice maps a week. And some of the maps, I let her start from a map that she's previously started. She can build from an earlier map. But about once every two weeks, I make her start from scratch. With a fresh piece of paper, she gets to look at the book, and she simply draws the map. And I'm gonna show you this one. Uh, the spelling on the countries are horrible. But you can see kind of what she's learning to do here. And I'm not even sure how old this map is. I was scrambling to find it before we started today. So she is uh, starting to be able to draw those from, from the book. And then about once every six or seven weeks, I give her a list of countries and she has to draw the map from memory. Okay, she has to draw the map from memory up to the point that we've gotten to. She has the list of countries to help her, but she doesn't have any visual cues for the map. She ha has to draw it from memory. And she actually did a pretty good job with it. So Bambi, yes, I do a lesson about uh, 10 to 15 pages. I just get to a good stopping point. Sometimes it's like you finish with a little geographical section and you know, oh, this is a good stopping point. So I just get to a good stopping point, you know, 10 pages or so. And then she does two practice maps a week. And then after about, you know, six weeks or so, um, I, I continue to add on it, add on to it. So she might do two practice maps a week for like two weeks. And then we do another section that's about 10 pages. And she practices those maps for a couple of weeks. And then we do another section that's about 10 pages. And then after we did about three sections, that was when I gave her the list of countries. And I was really nice. I listed them in the order that we had learned to draw them. And then that helped her then to be able to just draw the map from memory, from scratch. And we're just gonna keep practicing this and working on it this year. Next year, we'll move to Europe and then after that, uh, you know, we'll move to the USA and then we'll circle back around. Tristan wants to know if they're learning anything about the countries or are we just focusing on the mapping for now? Right now, we are only doing the mapping. We're not doing anything extra with geography. We did a couple years ago, we did like a country study. It was fabulous. I would love to find a way to fit a country study back into what we're doing again. Um, and I just haven't found a way to do that time-wise. You know, it's right now we're learning mostly through history. So, um, but yeah, that would be fabulous because that was one of Olivia's favorite things to do, one of those kind of cultural uh, geography studies. Okay, so if you, so I'm doing this with my sixth grader. If you have kids who are younger, this is what we used to do. Uh, and I should be doing it with my younger boys and I've really kind of dropped the ball this year, but everybody used to do this in morning time. So basically what I have here is I have a map of South Africa 
and I have all the things labeled on it that I want them to know. Now, some people have talked about doing this and handing your kids an atlas. I found out that was just way overwhelming. There was way more on the atlas that, I mean, these are kind of like the main features. Not even every capital is on here. Um, just maybe some major capitals. And so, um, I put a few things on here that I wanted them to know. And then here's a blank map. And here is your dry erase marker. And so, uh, yeah, no, Diana, they're not from Wonders Maps. I think they're Uncle Josh's is what these particular ones are. Um, and uh, it's this, I can't remember if it's the same company or not. I think it is. But uh, anyway, these are not um, from the Wonder Maps thing. So, um, okay, so what you do is you hand the child this map and you hand the child the blank map and you hand them the pen and you tell them, choose three things from this map to label on your map, okay? Now, at the same time, we were memorizing the names of the South American countries. So, the kids had been singing songs and hearing about Brazil and Colombia and uh, Ecuador and uh, Peru and all of those things. They had been singing about the Amazon River and all of those things. So this was not like totally new to them. At, in the memory work section of our morning time, we were actually singing songs about and learning these countries. And then I would give them the map and I would say, choose three things from this map to put on your map. And they would. And I tell you, my little guy who was in third grade last year, he would put the first letter of the name of everything on here. And then when he got finished, he would, um, he would push it back over to me and I would say, okay, now what are these? Because he had only written the first letter. So he would verbally tell me what each thing was that he labeled. So now Olivia was able to write them out, uh, but he would just put the first letter. And so then when we did that, we would erase them, put them away. The very next day, we did this every single day. The very next day we would pull these out again and they would add those three uh, things back again and a couple more okay and they would do it until they got to the point where um, you know they could remember they could like put those things on the map without looking at this map or excuse me without looking at this map they could put them on there so it would get to where I would be handing them the blank map they would label everything they could remember and then I would give them the other map back they could check their answers and then they could add a few more things. And then every single time, the third grader would tell me verbally what it was he had put on the map. So he was able to do that just by putting the first letter on there. And as we got probably a good semester into the school year, they could label and name everything on the map. Now, if I were to give it to them right now, we have not been reviewing as we should, and that's something we should be doing, is they should be seeing this map Probably once every three weeks at least, I should be pulling out the old maps for review, and I've been negligent in that, but um, they would probably have a little bit harder time of it this year. But last year, they were whiz-bang with it. So, um, note to self, review the old maps. But this was a great thing, and it really worked with the younger kids who maybe weren't ready to draw maps at that time, don't have the, the physical dexterity to do that. Okay, so a couple of other fun things. Um, uh, Latin America, the geo puzzles, well, any of them. They have them for all the continents and the world, and the puzzles are shaped like the countries. Kids love to do these while I'm reading aloud in morning time. So if you have a nice geography read aloud that you want to read, um, you could do that and the kids could work on the puzzles. And I usually have a puzzle for the current continent that we're working on. Bambi, I did do the map stuff every day. It took like five minutes, maybe six or seven. So, and yeah, Jessica, it does help to have the fine point pens. And I used to have some of the ones with erasers and I don't know where those went. Um, maybe they went to co-op, but I like the fine point ones with the erasers on the end. Those are awesome. Okay, another thing we like to do is play games with geography in morning time. So Scrambled States of America is one of our favorite games. And I found that if uh, there's 
rules in here where you could play uh, the slow way. They have kind of like the slow rules for younger kids and then even like a four-year-old can play this game. So this one is a lot of fun. Uh, they don't even have to necessarily be able to read. You can help them and they just love to play this, this uh, particular game. So, um, and then Geography Bingo. So Misty Winkler turned me on to this one and uh, this is a great way to learn it's made by the same company and it's a great way to learn about the states and the capitals and things like that. So this is really good too. Um, and then, so Tristan asked earlier, if you don't want to do like a full blown big geography study, one of the things that is really easy for you to do is to always have a geography read aloud going on in your morning time. So maybe the kids are over here working on their maps or they're working on a geography puzzle or something like that. And you just have, you just rotate between different countries and different areas of the world. So you don't have to do something big elaborate with crafts and food and things like that. You can just have some kind of really good book going at any given time. And then when you get to some uh, geographical feature in that book, you know, look it up on, in an atlas, look it up on the globe. But morning time is the perfect time for that. And so a couple of resources we have for you. A, a couple of years ago, Jessica did a great post of geography books um, for one of our summer reading programs. And she's going to drop the link for you for that one down there. So just lots of really good books in there about uh, different countries and things like that. Oh, great idea on Hobby Lobby and the games at 40% off. Yes. And then... So, Bambi, we're sending you to some now. And then also, if you are studying U.S. geography, you want to go to the blog and go to uh, pambarnhill.com forward slash U.S. geography. And that is the homepage for Jessica's eight for each state series. And there are eight different resources for each state. And when I say eight resources, like some of the resources have like five things listed under it. So that's, um, you know, there'll be four or five books and there are YouTube videos and, and all kinds of things like that. So if you're studying U.S. geography, we've got you covered. You could do a state, excuse me for bumping the table again, you could do a state a week or a state every two weeks um, and just have lots of great things to read, uh, lots of good suggested readings from your library. So that would be a good thing to check out too. Um, and then one more thing I wanted to mention, if you like chalk pastels, we kind of started with chalk pastels and I'm going to wrap it up with chalk pastels. Uh, at chalkpastel.com, they have a wonderful American landmark series of um, chalk pastel tutorials. And so you do like the Statue of Liberty and uh, I think one of the, can not the Grand Canyon, but one of the other canyons in Utah. Jessica, you're going to have to help me because you've done them and I haven't. But uh, they do have that chalk pastel series of the American landmarks. What's in there, Jessica? Is it like, um, oh, you did them. I saw you do them. And I just can't remember what they are. Uh, but just from various locations around the United States. I think they have like the Liberty Bell and uh, things like that. I was hoping Jessica would pipe up. And, oh, gold there. She is Golden Gate Bridge. That's one. Yellowstone. So Jessica did those with her state series. So that's a way to bring art into your geography studies as well. But easy art, not like, you know, have to build the prairie schooner because you're studying Oregon art. You know, easy, lovely art for your morning time. So, tons of books out there. Lots and lots of good books. So, check those out on the website. And if you have any questions, uh, missed any of the links, or would like any more recommendations, or if you have any recommendations of your own that you would like to share, go ahead and drop them down in the comments for this video. And that way, they'll be there for everybody to look at who watches the video later. So, yay, Amy, good, my, my work here is done. So, and now I have a kid to take to gymnastics. <laughs> so, you guys have an awesome, awesome rest of your day. I am going to do just a couple more things, gymnastics, cook dinner, 
fold laundry, and then I'm crashing. I'm done for the day. What is the topic for the next time? That is a really good question. And I think, see, this is where, this is where I really missed Dawn because I didn't tell Jessica to remind me what the topic would be for last time and for next time, and Dawn always does. I think it is, there is an event on the Facebook page, um, Morning Time for Any Homeschool Method. We're gonna talk about what can you do if you are a unit study homeschooler or if you are a, an unschooler or anything else. Um, school at home and how can morning time work for your family? Because I think a lot of times people get the idea that morning time is only for classical homeschoolers or Charlotte Mason homeschoolers and it's not. It can actually really be fun for any uh, and effective for any kind of homeschooler. So we're gonna be talking about that one next time. So you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.